Hey guys, Fred here. It's been nearly three weeks since I assembled my Anet A8 3D printer, and with almost one reel of filament under its belt, I figured now would be a good time to share what I've learnt and tell you about the overall experience that I've had with this machine so far. In my last video, I did a time-lapse assembly of the printer and gave a very brief overview of the spec. You should probably watch that video first, so go ahead and click the annotation and come back here afterwards. I'll be waiting! As expressed in the video just mentioned, I was really impressed by the quality of the packaging, the parts in the kit, the documentation and the assembly instructions. Even the Gearbest website was not your usual Chinese website and featured a handy tracker to see the progress of your order, which I liked quite a lot. I paid £139.99 for this machine, which included shipping, but the price has been fluctuating a lot recently, so if it's more than this, you may want to wait until the next flash sale. Also, Matt from DIY Perks managed to get a coupon code for his viewers, so go ahead and check out his video, I've put a link in the description, and uh, grab the coupon code for yourself. Despite all the praises, the amount of filament provided with this kit is ridiculous. The 10 meters of PLA was not even enough to print my first item, which also happened to be one of the included models on the SD card. One of you guys left a comment in the last video asking me how I was able to get the two-tone effect on my first print. I'll start by saying that this effect was not by choice. It only happened because I had thought to buy a full reel of filament beforehand and was forced to switch over to a new reel of filament mid-print. This was tricky and didn't work that well as I was not aware of the pause mode hidden within the awkward at times menu system. This meant I had to change the filament on a moving head whilst it carried on printing. The lack of extrusion during this time resulted in a visible crack on the model. To properly perform a changeover mid-print, you must firstly pause the print before the filament runs out, but close enough to the end as not to waste too much material. Then, depress the lever and remove the filament in a quick and continuous movement. This is to prevent clogs and jams within the heat break of the hot end. Immediately proceed by feeding in the new filament and then resume the print. Once you have paused the print, you need to work quickly as you run the risk of handling the extruder head or knocking the build plate after the stepper drivers go to sleep, which happens about 30 seconds after pausing. This will allow the extruder head and build plate to move and skip steps, resulting in the previous and future layers becoming misaligned, thus ruining your print. Also, depending on your firmware, the hot end may just sit at the location specified by the last movement command, which may melt a small hole in your model if left for long enough. Therefore, preparation is key to expediting the changeover procedure. Other than the filament fiasco, the print turned out quite well, regardless of how loose the X and Y belts were during that print. More on that later. The heated bed is covered with masking tape out of the box and provides a suitable surface for sufficient adhesion between the printed object and the bed. This tape worked a little too well as a huge patch tore off whilst removing my first print. Fortunately, I had already heard about these issues and had purchased a BuildTac print bed surface from Amazon, a link to which is in the description. After it was cut down to size and the self-adhesive backing was uncovered, it was just a case of sticking it to the heat bed, making sure to remove all trapped air bubbles using a scraper or credit card. The bed levelling and temperature has a lot to do with how well the prints stick, but the solid plastic bed liner has far more strength than tape and allows for more force to be applied to the model before damage occurs. This is a must-have upgrade if you want time after time reliability. There is nothing worse than coming back to a print halfway and seeing that it's delaminated from the bed. You will also want to grab some 70% isopropyl alcohol to clean the bed between prints. I recommend picking up a multi-pack of pre-injection swabs as they include a handy little cloth to clean the bed as well. I bought a pack of 100 swabs for £4 and this should last me for the foreseeable future. Speaking of modifications, I had planned to fit an X and Y belt tensioner before even ordering this printer, but I completely forgot to leave some excess belt material when assembling the Y axis. Fortunately, I remember to do this for the x-axis, which solely relies on the friction between the white plastic piece and the smooth rods. 
The updated tensioner by Thingiverse user Valley24 uses a single printed part and the spare nuts and machine screws included with your kit to tension the belt. What makes this design far superior is the fact that it presses directly on the ends of the smooth rods and is not reliant on the friction fit plastic parts, thus preventing slippage over time. Another upgrade was the cable management which I had purposely chosen not to bother doing straight away as I had already planned on using some printed parts to do it properly at a later date. I used cable chains or drag chains for the X and Y axes by Thingiverse users Papinist and Dur 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 respectively. Neither model specified how many links were needed for each axis. My X axis ended up needing 14 links while my Y axis needed 20. Your mileage may vary and I would recommend printing a few extra just in case they get damaged during the removal process. It's now time for the big one, auto bed levelling. I definitely recommend that you do this mod if you haven't already done so. This is a must have feature if you're looking to reduce your setup time and increase your print repeatability. While I have heard some bad reviews amongst the YouTube community, I think it is possible that they did not set up the start G-code correctly. For those that don't know, G-code is an industry standard machine code that all 3D printers read line by line to make the relevant movements, temperature changes and extrusions. It is also used to trigger certain modes on your printer. I found that doing an auto level command G29 followed by a home command G28 would ignore the levelling data and just use the limit switch. I was having no end of trouble until I swapped the order of these commands. However, if you use the start G code shown on my website, the link to which is in the description, you should be able to get it working properly. I recommend that you test your auto leveling feature straight away by purposely putting the bed on a completely ridiculous angle. That way you'll see the Z axis move as the head moves from left to right or the build plate moves forward and back. If the Z axis doesn't move, then it's obviously not working correctly. I powered the sensor by putting it in parallel with the power supply and level shifted the signal using a 2N4401 MPN transistor. I put the collector and the emitter across the pins on the limit switch connector and then connected the base of the transistor through a 10K resistor to the signal pin of the sensor. This allows the limit switch to still be used and provides added redundancy in case your proximity sensor stops working. Effectively you have two switches now, the limit switch and the proximity sensor. However, you need to make sure that your limit switch is not triggering before the proximity sensor, so reduce the height. I ended up using an MPN 8mm inductive sensor with great results. I've provided an Amazon affiliate link in the description. In order to use the sensor to do multi-point levelling or tramming, you need to upgrade the firmware to Skynet. It's just a case of extracting the folder, opening the Arduino IDE which has been pre-compiled for an ANET printer, and uploading the code. The details of which are a bit beyond the scope of this video, so take a look at the link in the description. Other than that, I think that's the end of this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, do, do write them below, as I will be reading them. I'd highly recommend all of the mods in today's video, uh, and if you have any questions regarding them, please leave a comment below asking me about them. Uh, like it if you liked it, dislike if you didn't, subscribe for my next video which will be on my uh, enclosure that I've put my printer in to reduce noise and to keep in the heat and allow for better prints so yeah definitely subscribe and make sure you click the notification icon. So yeah, as always thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!